Welcome to Breaking It All Down, I'm Count Zero. This week I'm taking a look at a video game that I've been talking about reviewing for a while and finally getting around to. It's a game that doesn't particularly fit into the categories of science fiction or fantasy. Specifically, I'm taking a look at Max Payne. Thus far, I've played every game in the Max Payne series. I've loved the series' hard-boiled tone, and that's meant both in the sense of the novels by creators um, Deshaun Hammett and Raymond Chandler in terms of hard-boiled detective fiction, and also in the sense of the film by John Woo. The first two games, developed by Remedy Entertainment, combined a very well-told story with some very good, solid third-person shooter gameplay. When I learned that the third installment of the series was going to be developed by Rockstar Games themselves instead of by Remedy, I was a little concerned. While Remedy's games have some weaknesses when it comes to the actual gameplay, as demonstrated by the first game's weird platforming sequences, for example, their narrative was flawless, or almost flawless, with little clues throughout the level setting up and teasing all of the game's twists. There was still some ludonarrative dissonance with the massive body count of the gameplay not quite meshing with the tone of the story, but otherwise it worked fairly well. On the other hand, Rockstar has a good track record of designing games with solid and enjoyable gameplay, but was running into some real issues on the narrative front. Consequently, I was concerned that while Rockstar might get the gameplay absolutely right, they get the narrative, which has historically been one of the series' strengths, absolutely wrong. One of the things the game does right is move the story into an environment that's pretty different from most other video games. Brazil. The game is set well after the events of the second game. Max has been drummed off the NYPD and has taken a job as a bodyguard for a rich family in Brazil. When one of Sao Paulo's street gangs start making attempts to kidnap family members, it's up to Max to get to the bottom of the kidnappings and find out who's behind them. The story is a little more grounded than the first two games. While the first game's story was related to a new drug ending up on the streets of New York and Max investigating the drug's source while also attempting to avenge his family, the plot ended up veering into some weirdness, with the drug being created by a faction of some vast conspiracy that manipulates world events, with this faction being represented by Ra Acer Corporation, headed by Nicole Horn. <clears throat> Max was guided by an opposing faction, represented by Alfred Woden, who was out to stop Horn. Horn. The second game had similar um, plot, or had a similar plot, with another of Max's allies from the first game, game, Vladimir Lem, killing Woden, who was revealed as Lem's mentor, with Lem resenting Woden for liking Max more than him. Max Payne 3, on the other hand, just drops the conspiracy from the first two games entirely. There's or at least rather the conspiracy from the first two games. There's still a conspiracy that Max is trying to get to the bottom of, but it's considerably more mundane. However, while the plot is less convoluted, the presentation of that plot is not as good. The first two games told the plot through in-engine cutscenes and graphic novel sequences, while with this game, the in-engine cuts the in-engine cutscenes are still there, but the graphic novel sequences are gone. Instead, the game uses split-screen sequences to try and replicate the graphic novel look, sort of like what Ang Lee did, uh, or rather attempted to do, in his Hulk movie. Unfortunately, it didn't work there, and it doesn't work well here either. Further, for some unexplained reason, Rockstar decided to put a sort of video corruption effect into the cutscenes as a recurring theme. The effect is obnoxious and grating, and there's no way to turn the darn thing off. It does nothing to add to immersion, nor does it make the gameplay experience any more enjoyable. Other than these camera problems, the game plays just as well as earlier games in the series. The combat moves very well, and in particular, the game reduces the amount of damage you can take, but lets you stick to cover, and in turn lets you shoot dodge out of cover very easily. This actually causes the game to better reflect the sort of heroic bloodshed genre of cinema better than the first two games in the series did. The other new mechanic the game adds relates to painkillers. If you have painkiller stockpiled and you take enough damage that would kill you, you go into kind of super bullet time and have a few seconds to kill an enemy. If you do that, you're revived, you're revived immediately and at three quarters health, which is actually more than a normal dose of painkillers will heal in the game. One other thing that bears mentioning, and this is the reason why I didn't do gameplay capture for this game, instead I uh, uh, asked another YouTuber to, like if I could use their footage, is I encountered 
problems with the game crashing to desktop on both of the consoles I tried it on, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. With the PlayStation 3 version, restarting the game popped me in right before the problem started, and I was able to get past that sequence without any additional problems. With the Xbox 360 person version, on the other hand, I got stuck at the same crash and was unable to get past it with multiple discs and getting replacements from Gamefly. The crash in both games occurred during the stadium level, but at different places. On the PS3 version, it occurred while going up a stairway, while the Xbox 360 version occurred during a cutscene transition be oh, transitioning between wow. this level and the next. Is this game worth playing? Yes, I would definitely say so. I had fun playing the game, as with other games in the series, and... While I enjoyed it, though, I'm probably not going to go through the game repeatedly at higher difficulties, but I generally don't play games that way. I do recommend picking the game up, though. By now, we've gotten Game of the Year editions for it, or full expanded editions with all the DLC bundled in with it, so if you can find a copy with all of that, go ahead and pick it up. I think you'll enjoy it. At least if you enjoy third-person shooting. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you'd like to see me improve my production values, or livestream video games, or come to a convention near you, or just there's something you want me to review, please consider supporting my Patreon. The link can be found in the show notes below, and up and to the right on my YouTube page. Thank you. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.